As yes, part of the sectional module, we'll actually go through the details about mounting ADLS onto the Databricks platform on Azure. ADLS stands for Azure Data Lake Store. We can actually have Databricks workspaces where we can have Databricks clusters. We should be able to mount the ADLS onto the Databricks platform so that we can eliminate using WSB protocol while accessing the files on ADLS. It will facilitate us to get away from underlying cloud nuances when it comes to processing the data by developing the jobs abstracting away from the protocols such as WSB. We should be able to use DBFS, uh, which can be leveraged on any cloud platform as protocol to access the files from the underlying cloud storage. You will understand all those aspects by the end of the section or module. Even if it is not 100% clear at this time, don't worry too much about it. Now, let's go to the details about what we are going to cover as part of the section or module. We'll first go to the details about creating a DLS storage account. And also we'll see details related to how to create containers uh, in that. And also we'll see how to upload uh, directories or files into that container. On top of going through details related to storage, such as storage account, container, etc., we'll actually go through the details about AD app registration. AD stands for Active Directory. AD app is the one which will integrate the containers on storage account with the Databricks platform. We'll also see how to integrate AD app with the Databricks workspace. Once we integrate AD app with the Databricks workspace and then mount the container onto the workspace, we should be able to access all the files and folders in that container across all the clusters that are there as part of the Databricks workspace. In this case, we'll be creating similar to Databricks workspace one and we'll be making sure that the container that is created as part of the storage account is mounted onto this platform and also we'll validate whether the container is accessible from these Databricks clusters or not. As we are not going to integrate uh, the AD app which is created on top of this uh, ADLS storage account with the other workspace, we will not be able to access the container or the folders or files in that container as part of the clusters that will be part of the Databricks workspace two which is another workspace with respect to Databricks platform, whatever clusters that will be there on top of it will not be able to access the storage here because we are not going to integrate via AD and mount onto this uh, workspace. That being said, let's go through the details one step at a time. You will be comfortable with the process of mounting ADLS onto the Databricks workspaces where the containers within that ADLS storage account can be accessed without any issues. By doing this, we should be able to eliminate the dependency on using WSB protocol and passing the credentials to actually access the files and folders in ADLS. We can directly access as if we have local files and folders on each and every node in the cluster. At this time, we are going through the details about mounting ADLS onto Azure Databricks. For the demonstration purpose, I'll be creating a new Databricks workspace so that we can isolate and we should be able to clean up fairly quickly once the demo is done. So let's go ahead and make sure that we have new Azure Databricks workspace where we should be able to play how to mount ADLS onto that Databricks workspace. For that, I'm actually getting into the portal.azure.com. You can see that I'm in portal.azure.com. I'm already logged in. You should be able to see Azure Databricks as part of the recent services as I have used recently. You can click on it and then you should be able to click on create to create a new Databricks workspace. In this case, I'll be creating a new resource group. Let me click on create new here. Let me give the name as ITV ADLS DB RG Demo. And this is the resource group name. Similar to this, I'll be giving the name to workspace also. When it comes to workspace, I will replace RG with WS. WS stands for workspace here. Now when it comes to region, let me choose East US here. I should be able to scroll up and go to East US. When it comes to pricing tier, let me use standard. Then I should be able to click on review plus create. We don't need to configure anything as part of networking tags, etc. We can directly say review plus create. It will validate and then it will confirm whether we will be able to create or not. You can see that create button is enabled. Now you should be able to click on create. It will take care of adding the workspace for us. Let's wait until it is successful, then we'll take it further. Now you can see that the deployment is completely done. We should be able to click on this to go to the resource. It will take us to the workspace. Now we should be able to click on launch workspace to launch the Databricks UI. Once we are in the Databricks UI, we should be able to take care of whatever is required whenever the time comes with respect to mounting the storage onto the Databricks platform. Let's wait until rest of the steps are done. Then we'll come back to the Databricks UI to take care of mounting the storage onto the Databricks platform or Databricks workspace. For now, let's check whether the Databricks UI came up appropriately or not. You can see that Databricks UI came up without any issues.
At this time, we are going through the details about mounting ADLS onto Azure Databricks. At times, we have to use Databricks CLI to take care of certain tasks. Let's make sure that we have Databricks CLI installed. If not, we'll take care of installation and then we'll also take care of configuration. Then we'll actually take care of rest of the steps which are involved to mount the ADLS onto the Databricks workspace or onto the Databricks clusters. That being said, you should be able to open the terminal if you are using Mac. If you are using Windows, you should be able to open the PowerShell. When it comes to Databricks CLI, either it can be installed globally or it can be installed as part of Python virtual environment specific to a specific project. In our case, earlier we have demonstrated how to install Databricks CLI as part of specific Python virtual environment associated with a specific project. It is nothing but this one. Let me go to projects, then uh, internal, then bootcamp, then ITVersity material. Then we have something called as data engineering on DB. Now if I say ls-ltr, you can see there's a Python virtual environment here. Uh, we have taken care of installing Databricks CLI into it. We should be able to activate the virtual environment by saying source db-venv bin activate. Now the virtual environment is activated. You should be able to run command called as piplist, then grep Databricks. You can see that Databricks CLI is installed as part of this Python virtual environment. You can also validate whether it is accessible or not by using Databricks then hyphen v command. In case if you do not see a Databricks CLI installed, you should be able to install it fairly quickly by using pip install and then by saying Databricks hyphen CLI, it will take care of installing the Databricks CLI as part of this virtual environment. Then you should be able to validate by using Databricks hyphen v command to see if you can actually access the Databricks CLI or not. Yeah, we have confirmed whether Databricks CLI is installed or not. Now it is time for us to configure. We'll be configuring against the Databricks workspace, which we have created as part of the previous lecture. For that, we should be able to go to Databricks UI and then we should be able to go to uh, user settings. As part of settings, you have something called as user settings. Using user settings, we should be able to generate new token. Using this token, we should be able to configure the Databricks CLI and then we should be able to interact with this uh, environment using Databricks CLI. As part of the previous lecture, we have gone through details about ensuring Databricks CLI being there as part of the Python virtual environment on Mac or PC. Now it is time for us to configure so that we can actually talk to the Databricks workspace which we have created for the current demo. Uh, for that, we should be going to the Databricks UI. We have to take the URL. We can actually copy and paste this. This will be the host when it comes to configuring the Databricks CLI. Now let me create a new memo here. Let me move it to this. Then let me actually specify the host. The host is nothing but this one. Let me actually say configure Databricks CLI. Let me increase the size of it. Now let me actually say host then the host URL here. Also we need to generate token and we have to take the backup of the token also. To generate the token you need to make sure that you are in the user settings. You can go to user settings by clicking on settings and then by clicking on user settings. And as part of access tokens we should be able to click on generate new token. Uh, we can actually give the comment for the token. Let's say ITV ADLS DB demo. This is the purpose of the token. Let me click on generate here. You need to make sure that you copy it and preserve it somewhere. Once you click on done without copying it, you will not be able to retrieve this information anymore. You have to regenerate a new token and you have to use the new token only. That being said, I have copied it. Let me click on done. Now let me go to the memo here. Let me paste the token here. We'll be using this information very soon to configure the uh, Databricks CLI. Let me pin this so that it is always on top. Now I should be able to go to a terminal. We need to ensure that the appropriate Python virtual environment is activated where Databricks CLI is installed. Then we should be able to say Databricks, then configure. Then you should be able to say token to configure using token. You can also specify the profile. I'll be giving the profile name as ITV ADLS DB. Keep in mind that if you do not specify profile like this, it will update the default profile. The default profile might be configured for something else. That being said, now we should be able to hit enter. It will prompt for the Databricks host. You have to copy paste this URL without any additional characters at the beginning or at the end of the URL. Once you paste it, it will prompt for the token. You have to copy the token from here. Make sure there are no additional characters that are copied. Then paste here then hit enter. It will take care of uh, configuring the CLI. Now you should be able to use command called as Databricks FSLS hyphen hyphen profile. The profile is nothing but ITV ADLS DB. 
if everything is configured properly we should be able to see some results there seems to be some typo somewhere that's why it is not working as per our expectations there should not be hyphen before ls now let's hit enter you can see that the command runs successfully without any issues also it have shown one result which is nothing but databricks hyphen results it will be there as part of all the databricks environments that being said this is how you should be able to configure databricks cli to work with a specific databricks workspace if you are using azure databricks in this case we have configured against the workspace which we have created for the demo of mounting adls onto azure databricks we'll be cleaning up these things once the demo is completely done when it comes to mounting ADLS onto Azure Databricks, you can actually start anywhere and you should be able to connect all the dots. In this case, we have three dots. One is ADLS storage account along with the container. Second one is AD app registration. Third one is the Databricks workspace. In this case, we'll be starting with AD app registration. In this lecture, let's go ahead and register an Azure Active Directory application so that we can use it to integrate the ADLS storage account with the Databricks workspace. That being said, for that, you have to go to Azure portal. I'm already in the Azure portal. Now we should be able to search for Azure Active Directory. You should be able to see as part of the search results here. Now you can actually click on it to get into the Azure Active Directory. Once you are in the Azure Active Directory under Manage, you should be seeing App Registrations. You can click on App Registrations here. Then you can actually click on New Registration to take care of uh, the Azure Active Directory uh, App Registration. Let's click on new registration. Let me give the name as ADLS hyphen Databricks hyphen mount hyphen demo. You can leave rest of the things as defaults and then you should be able to click on register. Once you click on register, it will take care of creating the new app registration. You can actually see the details of new app registration here. Now you should be able to go to certificates and secrets here. We are in the new app registration which is just created which is nothing but ADLS Databricks mount demo. Once you are in this, you should be able to click on certificates and secrets. Now you should be creating new client secret. You can actually provide the appropriate description here. I'll be specifying it as ADLS Databricks mount demo. I leave the expiry time with the default which is nothing but uh, six months. Let me click on add. It will take care of creating the client secret. We have to take the backup of this value. And this will come handy at a later point in time. Let's copy this. Then let me go into my stickies or memos. Let me create a new memo. Let me give the title as the AD details. Let me specify the client secret value. Let me paste it here. Let me make sure that I reduce the font size so that uh, I have more uh, real estate to uh, get the details more appropriately. Let me use small here. Now when it comes to the client secret value, it is nothing but this one. And this will come handy at a later point in time. On top of client secret value, we also need a couple of uh, other information. The other information can be retrieved using war you. Let me go to the memo here. Let me pin this so that it is always on top. Now, when it comes to this value, we have to take the details with respect to application ID and directory ID. So let me copy this. Let me say application or client ID. Even this information is required downstream and hence we are taking backup of this information also. You can also come back to here and you should be able to retrieve this information without any issues. This will not be hidden from you. Now let's copy the directory tenant ID as well and paste as part of this memo or sticky by saying directory tenant ID then paste the directory tenant ID here. So this is the information which we need once we register an Azure Active Directory application. This is the information which comes handy to integrate the other components which are nothing but the ADLS storage account and Databricks workspace. We'll be using these details downstream. At this time, we are going through details about mounting ADLS onto Azure Databricks. As part of that process, in previous lecture, we have gone through details about registering an Azure Active Directory application so that it can be leveraged to mount ADLS storage account onto the Databricks workspace. That being said, in this lecture, we will see how to integrate the client secret value, which is copied as part of the previous lecture with Databricks workspace using Databricks CLI. Uh, this is where Databricks CLI comes into picture with respect to mounting the storage into the uh, Databricks workspace. 
That being said, we have to use a command called as Databix Secrets. Let's go to the terminal here. Let's make sure that we activate the appropriate Python virtual environment. The Python virtual environment in which Databix CLI is installed is as part of my project's directory structure. Let me go to projects, then internal, then bootcamp, then IT university material, then data hyphen engineering hyphen on hyphen DB. Now the virtual environment is nothing but db-venv. I should be able to activate by saying source db-venv bin activate. Now it is activated. We should be able to use command called as Databricks secrets. Using this, we should be able to integrate the client secret value that is generated as part of the previous lecture into Databricks workspace. For that, we need to create something called as scope using create hyphen scope. Then we have to specify the scope name by saying hyphen hyphen scope. The name of the scope will be ITV ADLS DB demo scope. Also, we need to specify the profile because we are not using the default profile. There is a typo in scope. Uh, that's why I came out of it. Let me copy this. Now let me say hyphen hyphen scope. Let me copy paste this. Now let me say hyphen hyphen profile. The profile name is nothing but ITV ADLS DB. Let's hit enter. You can see that the attempt to create the scope have failed with this error. It is saying premium tier is disabled in the workspace. Secret scopes can only be created with initial managed principal users. We just have to improvise on this command and then we should be able to create the scope. Let me hit up arrow. Then let me go to the last line in this. Now I have to say initial hyphen manage hyphen principal. Then we have to say users. Now let's hit enter. Now you can see that the scope is created without any issues. Once the scope is created, now we need to update with the client secret value which we have copied as part of the previous lecture. For that, we should be able to use command called as Databricks secrets. As part of Databricks secrets, we have a command called as put. We should be able to leverage it. We have to specify the scope. In this case, we should be able to give the scope name which we have used as part of the command Databricks secrets create scope. The scope name is nothing but ITV ADLS DB demo scope. Then we have to specify the key name. This is a new name which we have to specify here. I'm giving the name as ITV ADLS DB then demo key. Also we need to specify the profile so that we can actually talk to the configured Databricks workspace without any gaps. For that I should be able to leverage hyphen hyphen profile. In our case the profile name is nothing but ITV ADLS DB. Now let's hit enter. You can see that it have opened an editor. We need to paste the client secret value. Uh, I have taken the backup of the client secret value as part of the memo. Let me go to the memo here. We need to make sure that we copy this, paste here. Then we should be able to come out of this by hitting a colon and then X. On Mac or Linux, you will be seeing the VA editor here. And hence we should be able to hit escape after pasting, then colon X. It will actually save and come out of it. So after creating the scope, we have successfully updated the scope with key and value. The key is nothing but ITV ADLS DB demo key, the name which we have given while running this command called as Databricks Secrets Put. Value is nothing but the client secret value which we have picked from the previous lecture. As part of this lecture, using Databricks CLI, we have created scope. The scope name is nothing but ITV ADLS DB demo scope. Then we have updated with key and value pair. We have used client secret value, which means the first level of integration between AD app registration and the Databricks workspace on Azure are taken care of. We also need to use other information. We will go through those details at a later point in time whenever it is relevant. At this time, we are going through details about mounting ADLS onto Azure Databricks. In that process, we have created Databricks workspace as part of resource group called as ITV ADLS DB RG demo. And also we have created AD app registration. And also we have created secret scope using the secret value that is there as part of AD app registration. Now let's go ahead and create ADLS storage account in the same resource group which we have created earlier. First, let's validate the existence of the resource group. Then we'll actually get into the details about creating the storage account. For that, I'll be using Azure CLI or AD CLI. We have already set up AD CLI as part of my Mac. You should have it by now, even if you are using Windows. That being said, now I should be able to say AD then uh, group in this case we are trying to get the list of uh, resource groups we should be able to use command called as list then we should be able to say hyphen hyphen query then we should be able to say star in square brackets then dot name it will give us the names of the resource groups that are there at this time as part of my azure account let me hit enter and review the resource group names you can see the resource group ITV ADLS DB RG demo. This is the resource group which we are going to use to create the storage account as well. 
as we have seen earlier we should be able to use command called as az storage account and then you should be able to say list then hyphen hyphen query then star dot name to list the storage accounts at this time let's check the storage accounts you can see the storage accounts uh, as part of this list we'll be creating a new storage account by name itv adls db demo for that i should be able to use command called as az storage account then create i should be able to give the name for the storage account by using hyphen n the name is nothing but itv adls db demo uh, this is the storage account name then i should be able to specify the resource group name by using hyphen g when it comes to resource group name it is nothing but itv adls db rg demo let me specify it here also on top of these things we have to specify the location the location can be specified using hyphen l let me give the location as east us then we have to specify the sku we should be able to specify the sku by using hyphen hyphen sku the sku which we are going to use for this uh, storage account is nothing but standard underscore lrs we can also specify other type of SKUs here depending upon our requirements for now this is more than enough now let me hit enter it will take care of creating the storage account by name itv adls db demo uh, you should be able to validate by using az storage account list command you should be able to see the itv adls db demo as part of the output once we run the list command let's wait until this command is successful then we should be able to run this command to list the storage accounts if you would like to list the storage accounts within a specific resource group you can also use hyphen g to pass the resource group name now you can see that the command runs successfully you should be able to see the provisioning state it is succeeded now we should be able to use list command to list the storage accounts also you should be able to specify the resource group name to get the storage accounts within a specific resource group name by using hyphen g like this now let's copy the resource group name from the create command here let me scroll up uh, this is the resource group name i should be able to use this resource group name to get the list of storage accounts that are part of this resource group now let me hit enter and we should be able to see the storage accounts as of now there is only one which is nothing but itv adls db demo it means we have successfully created this storage account as part of this resource group now as storage account is ready it is time for us to integrate these two we should be able to use something called as im role to integrate these two let's go through the details as part of the next lecture as part of mounting adls onto azure databricks so far we have created databricks workspace then we have created ad app registration we have even integrated these two partially then we have created something called as adls storage account now it is time for us to integrate adls storage account with ad app registration using something called as im role on top of storage account now let's go to the azure portal let's search for uh, storage accounts then we should be able to click on it to go to the storage accounts dashboard in this case the storage account which we are interested in is nothing but itv adls db demo which is created as part of the previous lecture we should be able to click on this then we should be able to go to access control im by clicking on this once you click on access control im you should be able to click on add and then you have to click on add role assignment from this list you have to choose something called as storage blob data contributor you should be able to search from here let's search for storage then data then blob then contributor this is the one which you are supposed to select then you can click on next you have to click on select members here you should be searching for the azure uh, app registration which we have created earlier it actually starts with adls let's uh, search for adls here you can see the uh, azure app registration which we have created earlier it is nothing but adls databricks mount demo we have to select that then we have to click on select now we have to click on next you can ignore these things you can also ignore this one just click on review plus assign it will take care of uh, assigning the im role on storage account to azure ad application we have started with uh, storage account we have gone into access control then we got into the add then role assignment we have chosen appropriate uh, contributor role here which is nothing but storage blob data contributor once we select this and when we actually click on next as part of the members we have assigned the azure ad application which we have created earlier then we have saved it which means the im role on storage account is assigned to azure ad application the validation will be done once we start the process of mounting at a later point in time 
for now whatever is supposed to be taken care of is taken care of with respect to assigning IAM role on storage account to Azure AD application and hence we are good to go. At this time we are going through the details about mounting ADLS onto Azure Databricks. We are very close to achieve that. However, we need to have appropriate data set so that we can validate once the ADLS is mounted onto Azure Databricks. For that we'll be using RetailDB dataset itself. As you already know, the repository with respect to RetailDB dataset is in my GitHub account. You should be able to access using URL called as https colon slash slash then github.com then dgazraju it is my github account then retail underscore db dot git you should be able to clone this repository by using git clone command on top of this url it will actually take care of creating a folder by name retail underscore db under this folder we should be able to get into that folder by saying cd then by saying retail underscore db we can review the files and folders that are there as part of this folder by using lsf and ltr command on mac or linux you can see the files and folders here however as the retail db is cloned from git you should be seeing a hidden folder by name dot git you should be able to review the output of ls-altr it will actually list the hidden folders as well as of now we have one hidden folder by name dot git it is not required to copy into the storage account and hence we should be able to delete this let's delete using rm-rf dot git it will take care of deleting the folder now we can actually go to one level up we should be able to use appropriate command to upload this retail db folder into a container which we are going to create as part of the storage account which we have created earlier that being said as the data set is ready in the local file system or local system now it is time for us to creating the container or file system as part of the storage account and then upload this folder into that container or file system that will be created as part of the storage account when it comes to mounting ADLS onto Azure Databricks, we are ready with almost all the moving parts. However, we do not have the data as part of the ADLS storage account. Let's first create the container and then upload the data into the container. Now, let's go back to the terminal here. Let's use Azure CLI to actually upload the data into the container. Before that, we'll be actually creating the container as well using Azure CLI itself. The container within ADLS storage account can also be referred as file system. That being said, first let's review the storage account details. For that, we should be able to use command called as az then storage then account let's search for it you can see there is a command called as a list which we have used earlier we should be able to run this to list the storage accounts as part of resource group itv adls db rg demo you can see that there is one storage account by name itv adls db demo we'll be using this to create the container to create the container or file system we should be able to use command called as az then storage then fs then create let me fix the typo in create. Then we should be able to give the name to the container or file system using hyphen n. In this case, I'll be naming it as data. Then we should be able to specify account name by saying account hyphen name. The account name is nothing but ITV ADLS DB demo. Now the container or file system is created as part of the storage account. The name of the storage account which is used to create this container or file system is nothing but ITV ADLS DB demo. Let's list the containers or file systems as part of storage account ITV ADLS DB demo using command called as az then storage then fs list. Then I should be able to specify the account name by saying hyphen hyphen account hyphen name. The account name is nothing but ITV ADLS DB demo. Now let's hit enter and let's review the details about the container data. You can see the container here or file system here. Now we should be able to use command called as az then storage then fs directory upload. This is the command which we can leverage to upload the data from the local file system into the container that is created as part of the storage account. In this case we are trying to upload the directory and hence we are saying directory here. I have already reviewed this command as part of the previous section. If you are not 100% sure about these commands, review that previous section and then come here. That being said, as part of this command, we should be able to specify the file system or uh, container name by using hyphen f. It is nothing but data. We should be able to specify the storage account name by using hyphen hyphen, then account hyphen name. It is nothing but ITV ADLS DB demo. Then we have to specify the path of the folder which we want to copy. In this case, uh, let me duplicate this. It will actually take us into the same folder. Let's say PWD. We should be able to copy this. As part of this, we have something called as uh, retail underscore DB. We have to include that as well. However, we can pass the path using hyphen yes. Then as part of the double quotes, we should be able to specify the fully qualified path of retail DB like this. Then we should be able to use hyphen hyphen recursive. 
so that everything in this folder are copied into the uh, container data using folder name retail underscore db. The folder that will be having all the files as part of this container is nothing but retail underscore db itself. Now let's hit enter. It will take a bit of time to upload all the files recursively into the folder called as retail underscore db in the container or file system which is named as data. Let's wait until this is done. Then we'll actually review whether the files are copied properly or not using appropriate command. Now you can see that the command ran successfully. If you go through the output here, everything seems to be properly done. Let's clear the screen here. Now we should be able to use command called as az, then storage, then fs, directory, list. Then we should be able to specify the container name or file system name using hyphen f. In this case, it is nothing but data. Then we should be able to specify the account name using hyphen hyphen account hyphen name. The account name is nothing but ITV ADLS DB demo. And this will list all the directories that are there under data. It will actually go through the directories recursively. You should be able to see details of all the folders that are actually copied into the data. They are nothing but retail DB orders, retail DB order items, retail DB products, so and so forth. If you want, you can also use command called as EAZ storage FS file list and you should be able to list the files as well. Yeah, as we have taken care of setting up data as part of the storage account, now it is time for us to mounting the ADLS onto the Azure Databricks. Let's go through the details as part of next few lectures. As part of understanding the process of mounting ADLS onto Azure Databricks, so far we have created Databricks workspace, then we have uh, created Active Directory app registration and also we have integrated these two partially using secrets scope. After that, we have set up storage account and also we have created a container and uploaded data into the container so that we can leverage the data to validate once the mount is done. Now it is time for us to mount the storage account onto the Databricks workspace. For that, we need to have compute. One of the ways to actually achieve the compute and take care of mount is by having a Databricks cluster. In this lecture, let's go through the details about setting up Azure Databricks cluster. We'll be primarily using this to actually take care of mounting the ADLS storage account onto the Databricks workspace. Once the ADLS storage account is mounted onto the Databricks workspace, even if we terminate the cluster, we should be able to access the files that are there as part of the mounted uh, container on new Databricks clusters and also we should be able to access those using Databricks file system commands. That being said, let's go ahead and start Azure Databricks cluster. For that, we need to go to Azure Databricks UI. Uh, this is the UI related to the uh, Databricks workspace which we have created as part of this section or module. Now to create the cluster, you can actually go to create, then click on cluster. Let's give the name as uh, mount ADLS demo. When it comes to cluster mode, I'll be using single node. It is more than enough. When it comes to terminate after, let me set to 15. When it comes to node type, I'll be using 8GB memory and 4 cores. Let me scroll down here for it. I can actually choose this. Now I should be able to click on create cluster. It will take care of creating single node cluster. Once up, this single node cluster is more than enough to mount the ADLS onto the Databricks workspace. Also keep in mind that once the ADLS is mounted onto the Databricks workspace, even after terminating this cluster, as part of the new clusters, we should be able to access the files that are there as part of the ADLS, which is mounted onto the Databricks workspace. Let's go through the details so that you understand what I'm talking about uh, after going through the demonstrations. As part of previous lecture, we have gone through details about bringing up cluster by name mount ADLS demo so that we can leverage this to mount ADLS storage account onto Azure Databricks. First of all, we need to create a notebook and using that notebook, we should be able to come up with the code to take care of mounting ADLS storage account onto the Databricks platform. To create the notebook, we should be able to go to create here, then say notebook. Then we should be able to give the name to the notebook. Let's give the name as mount ADLS demo here. You can give the name of your choice. In my case, I'll be giving the name as Mount ADLS Demo. Now the notebook is created using Python as programming language. Now we should be able to create a dict by name configs and using that dict, we should be able to uh, mount by executing certain piece of code. I will go through the details in a moment. First, let's start with configs. When it comes to configs, it is nothing but off type dict. It will have several key value pairs. They are nothing but uh, auth type, product type, client ID, client secret, and uh, client endpoint. If you review this configs, you can see that the keys are static. We don't need to change anything as part of the keys. But when it comes to values, there are several placeholders. There are nothing but application ID, then scope name, then we have service credential key name, then we have directory ID. 
these are the information which we have captured earlier when we took care of setting up Active Directory app registration and also when we actually used Databricks CLI to actually create scope as well as place a key as part of the scope. That being said, we need to use that information to replace these placeholders. When it comes to application ID, it is nothing but the application ID related to the AD app registration. You should be able to go there into the Azure Active Directory. Then you should be able to go to app registrations. You should be able to click on app registration which we have created earlier which is nothing but ADLS Databricks mount demo. You should be able to get client ID and directory ID or directory tenant ID from here. We have already captured that information as part of this memo. We should be able to leverage this information or we should be able to copy paste from here as well. Now if you go to the notebook, first let's replace application ID. The application ID is nothing but this one. You can see the application ID as application client ID here. You can actually copy this and then paste here. Then comes the directory ID. Even directory ID is captured here. The directory ID is nothing but directory tenant ID. Let's copy this and then let's paste here. Now we need to update scope name and service credential key name. When it comes to the app registration, we even went into certificates and secrets and then we have created something called as client secret which have generated the secret value. We have captured that value. You can see the value here. Using this value, we have even created the key as part of the scope. First we defined the scope. Then we have used something called as database secrets put to actually place the key as part of the scope. The key name is nothing but this one. Here we need to use the scope name and key name to replace the values as part of this notebook. When it comes to scope name, it is nothing but this one. This is the scope name. Let's update the scope name here. When it comes to service credential key name, it is nothing but the key name which is generated by placing the client secret value using uh, Databricks secrets put command. The key is nothing but this one. We should be able to use it to paste here. Now we should be able to run this to take care of creating an object by name configs. Once the configs object is created, then we should be able to use dbutils.fs.mount with the appropriate arguments to mount the container or file system that is part of storage account onto the Databricks platform. In this case, we need to specify the container name. The container name is nothing but data. We have to replace storage account name. The storage account name is nothing but ITV ADLS DB demo. Let's uh, review the details by going into the Azure CLI here. Let's say AZ storage account list. Now we should be able to run this command. It will actually give us the uh, storage accounts that are part of uh, this resource group. It is nothing but this one. We are interested in this one. We should be able to use this to replace here. I have already typed that and hence we are good to go. Now comes the target location uh, using which you want to mount. It can be anything. It need not be data. However, I would like to mount as data only. If you want to use something else, you should be able to use something else as well, which means the data which is nothing but container or file system as part of the storage account ITV ADLS DB demo DFS uh, will be successfully mounted onto this location. Let me actually make sure that uh, there are no typos here. I suspect there are some typos. Let me undo. You can see that uh, I have replaced the dot as well. I need to make sure that dot is not replaced. In this case, I just have to replace this placeholder with the value ITV ADLS DB demo, then dot DFS dot core dot windows dot net. There shouldn't be any typos as part of source or even as part of the mount point. When it comes to mount point, I will be using data. So in this case, data which is nothing but container or file system that is part of this storage account will be mounted onto MNT data as part of the Databricks workspace. Now let's run this. You can see that this piece of code is executed successfully. Let's perform some sanity checks to make sure that it is mounted properly. If you recollect as part of data which is nothing but container or file system as part of storage account ITV ADLS DB demo, we have even uploaded a folder by name retail underscore DB. Now if we say percentage FS then LS, then if we say MNT data, it should actually display a retail underscore DB folder here. 
if it is not displaying then it is not mounted properly this is the sanity check which we can perform once this code is executed successfully now you can see that uh, we are able to see return underscore db folder which means it is actually showing some positive signs now it is time for us to perform some detailed validations to make sure that uh, everything is mounted without any gaps let's go to the detailed validation as part of the next lecture at this time we are going through details about mounting ADLS onto Azure Databricks. So far we have achieved the goal. We are able to mount the container or file system that is part of ADLS storage account onto the Databricks workspace. Uh, we have even validated by using %fs ls command on top of mnt data. We are able to see the retail db dataset in it. You can also check on this folder and see if we have all the subfolders in it or not. Let me copy paste here and then add retail underscore db. We should be able to see all the subfolders as well as files that are there as part of retail underscore db folder. You can see all the details here. That being said, now let's go through the details about developing a simple Spark application. We'll also see if we'll be able to use the mount point to write the files into that. Uh, that being said, first let me create data frame by name df. Then I will say spark.read.csv. I'll be reading the files from orders folder. Orders is there as part of slash mnt it is optional to specify dbfs then we should be able to say data then retail underscore db then orders i also want to specify the schema so that the schema is used to write the data back into the target location now when it comes to schema we should be able to use the keyword argument called as schema then we should be able to specify the call names as well as data types which are comma separated in this case when it comes to orders it have data related to four attributes they are nothing but order id which is of type int then order date, it can be represented as a data string. In this case, I'll be representing as a string. Then order customer ID, which is also uh, of type int. Then order status, which is of type string. Now, this will take care of creating the data frame by name df. Once the data frame is created, we should be able to use something called as write, which is nothing but a data frame writer object. Uh, we should be able to leverage that to actually write it to target location using whatever format we would like to use to write. That being said, I'll be just writing the same data frame, which is nothing but our orders dataset into another folder. However, this time I'll be writing using JSON file format. For that, I should be able to say df.write then json then i should be able to specify the target path in this case the target path will be from mnt data itself let me say mnt data retail underscore db underscore json then orders let's see if the data frame will be written appropriately into this location or not now i have ran it let's wait until it is completely run you can see that it is successfully run let's first validate using percentage fsls let me copy this then let's say percentage fs ls paste run we should be able to see files under this folder you can see here you can also review the extension the extension is nothing but json here now we should be able to go to terminal then we should be able to use az then the appropriate command to list the files in that location let me actually recollect the command here then i'll take it further i should be able to use command called as az storage then fs then file list when it comes to file list we should be able to specify the container name like this the container name is nothing but data when it comes to the path it is nothing but retail db underscore json then orders the account name is nothing but itv adls db demo let me change the account name here now let me run this and we will see whether uh, we'll be able to get the details about the files that are written by our spark job as part of our databricks cluster let's hit enter you can see the details here all the files that are generated by running this piece of code are visible using azure cli as well which means we are able to interact with the mount point not only from read perspective but also from write perspective this is how we should be able to mount containers or file systems from the adls storage account onto the databricks workspaces and use as part of the spark jobs that are developed and deployed on top of databricks clusters the main advantage of using this approach is our pipelines will be truly cloud agnostic. The code will not refer to any of the cloud protocols or cloud related APIs. The code will actually use Databricks and Spark APIs only. It will facilitate us to develop our pipelines by being uh, truly cloud agnostic. As part of the sectional module, we are going through the details about mounting ADLS onto Azure Databricks. So far, we have successfully achieved it. Now it is time for us to clean up everything so that we are not charged unnecessarily. Before cleaning up everything, let's validate the mount point by using command called as 
percentage fs ls slash mnt you should be able to see the mount point data under slash mnt now we should be able to unmount this by using this piece of code you can say db utils then dot then fs then unmount you just have to specify the mount point which is nothing but slash mnt slash data now the mount point is unmounted you can see that the piece of code is successfully executed and you should be able to view the message which says slash mnt slash data has been unmounted now if you say percentage fs ls slash mnt you will not be seeing data anymore now the mnt data is unmounted it is time for us to clean up everything so that we are not charged unnecessarily let's go through those details as part of the next lecture after successfully mounting adls onto azure databricks we are in the process of cleaning up everything so that we are not charged unnecessarily in that process we have already seen how to unmount the mount point from the databricks now let's stop the cluster then we will actually take care of deleting the resource group which will take care of deleting the databricks workspace and also the storage accounts because both the databricks workspace as well as storage account are part of one resource group that being said before going to the details about deleting the resource group let's make sure that the cluster is down for that we should be able to go to compute as part of the databricks ui then you should be able to click on this x which will take care of terminating the cluster and also deleting the configuration from the databricks workspace now you can see that the cluster is not only terminated but also the configuration related to the cluster is deleted from here that being said now we should be able to go to the terminal and we should be able to uh, delete the resource group which will take care of deleting the databricks workspace and also the storage account which we have created for the demo first let's list the uh, resource groups then we'll take it further to list the resource groups we should be able to use command called as az group then list then we should be able to use hyphen hyphen query then we should be able to specify the name like this so that we can get only the resource group names discarding rest of the information let's hit enter and we should be able to see the resource group names the resource group which we are interested in is nothing but itv adls db rg demo now we should be able to delete this resource group by saying az group delete then hyphen n the resource group name is nothing but itv adls db rg demo let's paste here let's hit enter let's say why hit enter let's see if the resource group will be deleted or not and also we'll confirm whether the databricks workspace as well as storage accounts are deleted or not that are supposed to be associated with this resource group let's wait until this command is either success or failed then we'll actually take it further you can see that the command ran successfully we should be able to go to azure portal and then validate in this case let's go to the azure databricks here you can see that the workspace related to uh, mounting adls onto azure databricks is gone also you should be able to go to the storage accounts you can see that even the storage account is gone you can also run this command which you have seen earlier to get all the uh, resource groups at this time let's run this to see all the resource groups you can see the resource group is completely gone and hence everything is cleaned up you can also see even though we haven't deleted this uh, uh, resource group it is related to the databricks workspace which we have created as part of the demos in the sectional module even that one is gone so all the dependent resource groups related to itv adls db rg demo are gone along with the databricks workspace and also the storage account which are used for the demo purpose we have created both as part of the same resource group and hence both of them have gone successfully this is how you should be able to clean up and make sure that there are no charges on you after you go to the details about mounting adls onto azure databricks